I'm joined today by Michelle Pereira, our Chief Investment Officer, to discuss politics, uh, which is one of our investment themes for 2021. Politics is always a major influence on markets and investment performance, which is why at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management, we always keep a close eye on the political world. So Michelle, after surviving the storms of the US election and Brexit, Am I right in thinking we can look forward to a maybe a more quiet and more settled period? Well, should we be looking forward to a more uh, settled period for politics? Um, in principle, yes, it should be quieter and it would enable us to focus on the pure investment work rather than trying to second guess politicians. But in practice, something always pops up. Mm -hmm. I can already see ahead that we've got Scottish elections. Uh, we've got um, uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who's coming to the end of her tenure. These things may stir markets up a little bit. Well, 2020 was certainly turbulent, um, and there are plenty of challenges facing the world as a result. One of the biggest challenges seems to be how we achieve sort of unity and overcome some of the equalities if we are to move into 2021 as best we can. What do you see as being the three main issues for investors to think about as a result of these inequalities created during the lockdown? Inequality has uh, increased uh, considerably during the pandemic. And uh, there are many families that are living from hand to mouth from government handouts, whether it's furloughs, whether it's uh, unemployment benefit pandemic programs. And uh, you know, it's going to be a very significant challenge for governments to uh, you know, find a way to get people back to normal financially. Uh, but it will be absolutely essential for them to do so. Uh, the other issue we have, of course, is that everybody is very excited about the vaccines. Uh, but even if we start inoculating people right now, by the time we can vaccinate enough of the population so we can achieve herd immunity, it will be the end of next year. And you have anti-vaxxers who will obviously slow things down. So in terms of the economic recovery, it won't be very steep, it will be progressive. And let's not forget that there's a generational issue um, because uh, young people uh, right now, they're, um, uh, driving is actually much more dangerous for them than COVID. And yet governments seem to be pinning the blame on the transmission of the virus on young people. Um, we will have to change. We'll have to make sure that there is enough buy-in so different segments of the population actually join into the, uh, the fight against the pandemic. There are certainly going to be some tough decisions to make ahead, aren't there? Um, and for the UK... Um, I guess we clearly need to make the most of the economic opportunities presented in the post-Brexit world um, if our economy is going to come back stronger and help the politicians close this budget gap. What do you see as being the post-Brexit reality? Well, the Brexit deal is being finalised as we speak mm -hmm. and Sterling is rising in hopes of a favourable settlement. But I, it's more likely that there's going to be a skinny deal, although it will be advertised as a great success on both sides. But why is it going to be skinny? Because the whole issue of sovereignty versus access to the market is intractable, basically. So it will have to be fudged in the end. And of course, for the UK, there's another concern, which is the fact that we don't have the bandwidth, I mean, namely the number of trade negotiators, to be able to do a sector-by-sector -sector trade agreement, not just with the EU, but with the US, with China, with India, with Australia, etc. Um, and that's going to be quite demanding for the UK. The Canadian Prime Minister remarked upon the fact that we didn't have that bandwidth recently. Uh, but on the positive side, it will require an unusual degree of unity in the country to take advantage of these opportunities. And I think we may very well get it after five years of divisiveness. We should talk about the US as well, I guess, um, given the size of, it, the, of its market and the influence on the world of investing. What do you see as the main political challenges for the US? 
Well, the U.S. is the strongest economic power in the world, the strongest military power in the world. It has the most creative technology hub. It is the biggest mm. financial market, but it's got a, a challenger now. China is challenging the U.S. on all of these areas, starting with technology, moving on to the military side and ending with the financial markets. And the U.S. is going to have to stand up to attention and deal with that uh, com competitor. Uh, and we're likely to see more unity in the U.S. after quite a lot of divisiveness as well. Uh, we're likely to see more unity in its fight against China. It's very interesting because in history, you don't normally see very often a, an upstart power trying to challenge an established power. You saw it in the 17th century with France challenging Spain, in the 19th century with Germany challenging Britain, and in the 20th century when the U.S. became the largest power. And now it's the turn of China. It will be very interesting to watch. We just have to hope that the Cold War is not going to get hot. It will be interesting to see their political appetite for climate change over the next few years. It's been on the agenda for a while, but I wonder how it's going to impact the next economic cycle. Um, I was thinking, would the US join the EU and China, Japan, South Korea in aiming for the 2050 net zero emissions target? Um, although I guess it's going to be China who bears the biggest burden given their current high pollution levels. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the, the political appetite around that? Uh, yes, of course. The environment is probably our biggest challenge ahead. Mm. Uh, it is a major part of President-elect Biden's uh, agenda with the appointment of veteran politician John Kerry as climate envoy. Um, if Biden does rejoin the Paris Agreement as promised, it will be an ambitious goal, which will require equally bold policies from the government. Uh, of course, he has a Republican Senate to deal with and therefore may not be able to do everything he wants, but the direction of play is inexorable. And uh, it will be much more difficult for countries like China and India, as you suggested, because of their current high levels of pollution. But it's very clear that the global consensus is going to lead them in that direction, and investors will have to pay attention. Uh, while politics isn't necessarily an investment theme in its own right, I can certainly see it presents many challenges for investors. After five years of political tension in Western democracies, I was thinking that we may be able to look forward to a period where we can concentrate on selecting investments without second guessing the political implications. It seems that there's always going to be political risks emerging which are going to influence how we invest. Just in terms of what this all means for investors into 2021, perhaps you could just have the final word? Brexit is definitely going to create a lot of opportunities for investors to select companies that can deal with this issue. Um, uh, and don't forget that the UK market and particularly value shares have been massively derated and therefore they will deserve their place in the sun pretty soon. Uh, but of course, you have to be very careful not to buy companies that are going downhill as we've seen in the retail sector recently. China is also going to be an attractive uh, part of the world to invest in. And traditionally, people would invest in Western companies that do business in China. But I think we may have to go direct more and more now. Uh, but you have to bear in mind that the standards of governance are not the same as we are used to. Um, and of course, the environment, as you know, Biden has appointed John Kerry as climate envoy. That means that it's an extremely important part of the agenda for his administration. And therefore, ESG investments, environmental, social and governance, are going to be uh, an extremely important part of what we do uh, so you can garner the returns from sustainability in businesses. Um, and of course, the uh, last thing you shouldn't forget is that um, um, the governments will have to balance the books and they probably will raise taxes at some point. So you should be speaking to your wealth advisor about your personal situation. Definitely. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thanks, Michelle.